Hiroyuki Imaishi and Studio Trigger are truly some of the best animators in the industry. They have some incredible talent that very few studios can compete with. This talent in animating Sakuga has turned Imaishi from being an unknown key animator at Gainax into being one of the most famous anime directors in the entire world. In this video, I don't want to just show cool looking animation like some people do. I want to explain what makes it so good. So let's take some time to focus on Hiroyuki Imaishi and how he uses animation techniques to create some truly amazing art. Before beginning, I should probably mention that I'm just a guy who likes talking about anime for fun, and in no way am I a professional animator. These are all things I've either heard from actual animators on YouTube, or things I've noticed myself while watching Imaishi series. And I should also mention that Imaishi isn't the only reason that the Sakuga exists in these shows. Many talented individuals such as Yoyo Shinari, Takafumi Hori, Sushio, and many others at Gainax and Trigger are also responsible for the great looking animation in these series. Now that we got all that out of the way, let's talk about the Sakuga and Hiroyuki Imaishi's works. I wanted to take a look at a small shot near the end of Kill a Kill. This shot is fairly simple, but it's packed with details if you look deep enough. This shot has five main movements. The first movement is her jostling her chair. The second movement is when Ryuko grabs the chair and pulls it above her head. There's a bit of an animation error here, as her leg seems to warp out of the chair. But this is so small that it won't break your suspense of disbelief. There's a bit of a pause for emphasis, then she slams the chair on the ground. When she does both movements, there are lines to emphasize the speed and the weight of the chair. Then when the chair flies up again, it spins a bit, giving Ryuko some time to finally kick the chair. And when she does kick it, the chair bends to account for her stepping on it. Before this, the chair doesn't bend dramatically, but she can bend its legs to the point where the chair bends. This subtle bend in the chair implies Ryuko's fighting prowess and her rage during the scene. Before we move on, I have one question for the viewers at home. What is the chair made out of? Now I'm not 100% sure, but I'm willing to bet that the chair is made out of plastic. Now how do I know this? Well, it's because of the way Ryuko interacts with the chair. Let's take a look at the movement again. The chair doesn't bend when Ryuko is throwing it or when it's in the air, but it does bend when she slams it with her foot. A wooden or metal chair would not bend that much when pushed on, but since it does bend that much, it's implied through the movement that the chair is in fact plastic. Holy crap, I just spent a minute and 15 seconds talking about literally 3 seconds of animation. Another scene that I like in Kill a Kill is this one. The scene does a good job at describing what I call running lines. When she's being pushed by the scissors, take a look at the ground. Notice that there's no detail on the ground except for these lines. The problem with this shot is that there are no other references in space other than Ryuko, so Imaishi and Trigger needed a better way to describe space and movement in this shot. So they put lines on the ground to describe her movement without her actually moving her body. This technique isn't unique to Imaishi, but he uses it a lot to describe motion in the shot. Also note that the lines are moving toward Ryuko. In the film world, when a shot uses lines to lead you to key elements in a scene, it's considered a leading line. So basically, this shot uses the lines in the ground and her giant scissor sword thing to lead you back toward Ryuko, who's charging up a move. This scene shows how subtle things like lines in the ground can make a dramatic impact on the anime's production value. These scenes are really great examples of Trigger's animation style, and how they can include subtle details that make the action feel much more cooler and grandiose. But Kill a Kill certainly wasn't Imaishi's first rodeo. It was the result of almost two decades of work Imaishi has put into directing anime. So let's take a look at the OVA that started it all. Dead Leaves is a very weird OVA, but it's honestly very impressive. It isn't very deep in terms of storyline, but it makes up for it with incredible Sakuga scenes. The story of Dead Leaves is basically about a guy with a TV head named Retro and a woman named Pandy wake up with no recollection of who they are and they go on wacky, often inappropriate hijinks together. But what makes this OVA so memorable, even after 17 long years, is that this was when Imaishi started to form his style of Sakuga. You can see some of the things Imaishi would use later in his career in Dead Leaves. Car smoke in Dead Leaves is very erratic, amplifying the anime's cartoon-like aesthetic. This cartoon anime hybrid style would go on to represent his work on other shows like Panty and Stocking and Space Patrol Luluko. But that isn't the only important lesson Imaishi learned from Dead Leaves. Another interesting thing in Dead Leaves is that there's a very strong sense of anticipation in almost every object. The movements don't just happen, there's almost always a build up to said action. By emphasizing the anticipation, 
It leads the anime to feel less like an anime and more like a western cartoon with anime overtones. This isn't unusual to see in animation, it's even part of the 12 principles of animation, but Imaishi built off his predecessor's work and used this principle to create an aesthetically pleasing product. But the work Imaishi did on the project wasn't just limited to this project. Dead Leaves was Imaishi's oldest project, so let's take a look at his newest. Promare was huge for Imaishi, not only because it was his first theatrical film, but also because it was his first project to use a significant amount of CGI. I know that CGI in anime is very unpopular, but a film like this needs to use CGI to make it engaging. And to account for this need for CGI, Imaishi and the people at Trigger needed to design the characters and the world in a way that would complement the CGI and the 2D animation. This is why the film uses many neon colors like purple or green. These colors tend to distract the audience from the change from traditional animation to 3D animation. Of course, just because the anime uses a lot of CGI doesn't mean it doesn't have any sakuga in it. It's quite the opposite. Premiere has some of the best animation Imaishi or Trigger have ever made. Let's take a look at the volcano scene animated by Toshiyuki Sato. This scene does a great job at showing Leo's rage at his current situation, but there are also some great techniques that Imaishi uses to make this scene all the more powerful. Notice the way that when the volcano erupts, it's not liquidy, rather the magma is shaped like triangles. In Promare, they frequently use triangles as symbolism for the burnish. Not to mention that the triangles are easier to animate than traditional fires. They also use this technique when the volcano explodes, but they use square for the rock instead of triangles. This leads to a lot of things moving on the screen, but they don't need to keep track of too many particles. In other words, Premiere was able to take complicated actions and simplify them down to shapes, which makes the animation load easier. But this scene is still impressive because it was able to take the complicated emotions of the characters and boil them down using actions, not words. Although Premiere isn't that complicated story-wise, it's still a great film. But we need to move on to the most obvious show that I haven't shown yet. You thought I forgot about it? No way. I just want to save the best for last. For me, Gurren Lagann isn't just a good anime, it's a way of life. I first watched this show when I was 14, and it's still my favorite anime, even after I've seen over 100 shows. And the reasons why should be obvious. The story is great, the characters are engaging, and the action scenes literally bend the fabric of the universe. Although it would be fun to talk about the characters in the show, I want to stick to the animation today. Now without further delay, let's talk about the animation in this amazing show. In Gurren Lagann, whenever Kamina and Simone combine, no, not that version. That's better. In this scene, you can see the blurry lines in the drill implying speed and power. This emphasis on the drill's speed makes the combining scene feel much more powerful. When they finally combine, you feel the weight of the metal and the spirits of Kamina and Simone in the mecha. Also, Imaishi took the anticipation used in Dead Leaves and cranked it up to 11. Every object in the scene feels real and it's used to make the scene feel all the more bombastic and jaw-dropping. I also like the more subtle details, such as the little effects around the side, that make the animation feel all the more real. While this scene is super good, it's actually not even my favorite part of the show. In my opinion, Gurren Lagann's final fight scene is the best anime fight ever made. I know that's a hot take, but I believe it to be true. What makes this fight scene so good, even for Gurren Lagann standards, is the weight and exaggeration of the characters in the scene. When Simon is coming down to fight the anti-spiral king, he is big in the shot, and his arm is very exaggerated, suggesting his power and ferocity in this scene. Technically, this 3 second long shot is all anticipation for the first punch. The amount of anticipation is insanely long but makes that first punch all the more impactful. Whenever a punch is thrown during the fight, you can feel the anticipation and the weight in the punch. 
That added weight shows that Simon and the Anti-Spiral King are truly ideological enemies and are fighting for the fate of the universe. The scene also does a great job at using shadows and line art to make it feel all the more effective. All in all, Yoyo Shinari understands how to exaggerate a fight and make it feel more powerful and grandiose. And you can see it in the way he ends the fight. When the final blow is exchanged, the camera shows Simon screaming with his drill and the shot changes to black and white. The only time in Gurren Lagann when black and white is used is when a character dies. So when you see Simon and the Anti-Spiral King fighting in black and white, you understand subconsciously that he is preparing to die. And somehow this animation choice makes it feel all the more real. That right there is what makes animation and Imaishi so special. They understand how to make a scene impactful with such a limited amount of information. So they were able to use all the previously mentioned techniques to make one of the best, if not the best, anime of all time. When making this video, I tried to show off the best stuff Imaishi has to offer. But this isn't as deep as the rabbit hole gets. There's way more stuff Imaishi has done that I didn't get the chance to cover as I don't want this video to take forever to make. So I encourage you to check out the Sakuga Bodu for your favorite Imaishi or Studio Trigger shows I've left in the description. This website has been essential in writing the video and it's cool to see some of the talent behind these amazing shows finally get the credit they deserve. Also, Imaishi isn't done making anime. Some of the new projects he's working on are Star Wars Visions and Cyberpunk Edge Runners. I don't know about you, but I'm incredibly excited to see what he's going to do next, and I hope you are too. I may make some videos on these when they come out, so please stay tuned for that. But overall, Imaishi is one of the best animators in the anime industry. His works have changed anime dramatically for the better, and he's helped inspire a whole generation of people to try animation. While it may take a while, I really hope to see some incredible things from him soon. Thanks for checking out my video, if you enjoyed it please give me a like, and if you'd like to see future content from the channel, please click the subscribe button and the bell icon to hear when I upload next. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.